Good morning, and welcome to Soul Call Sundays. I'm Reverend Christy Hardwick, and I'm happy to be here with you. Last week, Lisa spoke with us about open-hearted awareness, beautiful concept of noticing, paying attention, and living in a way that your heart is open and you remain aware of your open-heartedness. And this week, we continue the conversation with one of my favorite words and affirmations, which is yes. This idea of your divine yes. Where is your yes? What do you say yes to? As I thought about where my yes is, I went back to childhood and remembered how clearly a yes would show up in my body as a child. I don't know about you, but if someone said to me, do you wanna to go to Disneyland? Yes. Would you like a popsicle? Yes. Would you like to play with that toy? Yes. And I could discern the difference when I was asked something that I didn't want to say yes to. Would you like to go to bed now? Mm, I don't think so, right? So there were things that were really clearly a yes in your body. And when they weren't, that was also very clear, especially as we're children, because we lived in a really juicy way in our bodies exploring everything through the body, trying out what was possible through the body, even finding activities that were a yes for us based on how it felt. I was someone who loved to play on the monkey bars. That was a big yes for me. You put your sweater on the bar, you knee around it, wrap yourself around that and just swing. Loved that, absolutely loved that. Wasn't a very big merry-go-round person though. That was not a big yes for me. So in our childhood, we first we developed this discernment in our bodies of yes. And then as we grow into social situations and learning and being taught about where to look for answers, we begin to rely a little bit more on the head. And I noticed that as I got a little older, there began to be a file built up in my head and I would check into the files. Some of the files were from my family of origin. Some of the files were from my teacher. Some of the files were from books I read. I was an avid reader, even from the time I was a young person. So I had all these different sources of ideas. So I began to, instead of going right into the body and saying, hmm, do I feel a yes here in me? Do I feel yes? I would say, hmm, let me think. Is that a yes? Hmm. What does the world say? What does my teacher say? What do my parents say? What do the books say? And I lost some of the connection with the yes in my body. And I continued to use my brain and the files in there for a good portion of my life. Things that made sense, I would take inventory. Well, it makes sense to do this. It makes sense to do that. But I didn't really have a connection with the fullness of my body after a while, after my childhood was over and I was taught to discern in a different way. So as my life evolved and I was on a path of trying to find myself spiritually, I was introduced to many different kinds of tools. One of those tools was a divining instrument. I don't know if you've used these before, but I remember discovering one at Stuart Mineral Springs in California. It was a tiny uh, little ball of rose quartz at the top, and then a chain, and then a, a little kind of triangular shaped piece of rose quartz. And the thing was you would hold it and have a big yes in your body and say yes to yourself, and it would move a certain way. And as I practiced that, it, I noticed that the rose quartz would move like this. I thought that was fascinating. But then not knowing anything about the properties of any kind of um, minerals or crystals and their relationship to my body, I thought, well, 
it's because I'm vibrating and the vibration is moving the thing. But it doesn't really have intelligence, I was thinking to myself. So then I practiced my no. And the yes was like this. And then I practiced no, saying no, no, no in my body. And it moved in a completely different pattern. But how can this be? And this was probably you know, 25 years ago. And it started me on a path of curiosity about energy and mind, body, spirit connection. And so I would play with that in terms of yeses and nos and would ask very simple questions that I knew the absolute truth to and found it very accurate. So there was something about my body that knew my yes and knew my no. And then continuing on, I was introduced to muscle testing. Some of you may use that kind of a tool where you put your arm out and you're holding something, let's say it's some vitamin or something that you're wondering if this is good for you. And uh, your muscles are tested. How strong are you? First, you're just tested to see how strong you are in general. And then you hold the thing and see if you become weak because our bodies have innate wisdom in them. And the no comes as well as the yes with that. So I really appreciated learning about the connection between my mind and my body in the yes. And it was a little bit of a return to what I recognized in childhood that there would be some message that was not just from the files up here, but it would be from the full body. One of the other ways that I got involved in the body and the yes, excuse me, bit of a dry day, was in understanding energy centers. And some people talk about them in terms of chakras and thinking about the root chakra being the red and the rootedness to the earth and the orange color and the reproductive and creative areas and the yellow um, solar plexus gut area and the green heart and the blue throat and the indigo purple violet idea of our higher mind. I used to think that maybe the yes should be then in my gut if it wasn't just going to be in my head and my files. So I thought, okay, we'll focus on that energy center there. But what I came to realize was that the yes was in the fullness of the alignment of all of me. So the root and the creativity and reproductive and the gut instincts in the solar plexus and the heart and the throat and the highest. And so this idea of full alignment began to be the way that I would look for my yes. You can use tools like we talked about the divining instrument, the muscle testing, but your full body presence also gives you your yes. And that was a full return to that sense of childhood, that sense of childlike wonder and listening and noticing and exploring the world through the body. So as I worked through these ideas of how to find my yes, I came across a teacher who said something that was very profound for me and has stayed with me all these years. And that teacher said, the answer to how is yes. And so the answer to how is yes has been such a powerful affirmation of not going to the head for answers about how something that comes through spirit as an intuition, as guidance, as a mind to do, doesn't need to be checked in here. It needs to be checked through alignment, the open-hearted awareness and the fullness of the connection with the whole body system, the whole energetic body system. The answer to how is yes. So when I get an idea or a hit, I first check in and say yes in the fullness of my body, mind, spirit connection. Then the signs and the answers and the resources and the right people follow that vibration rather than going right into my head saying the ideas, well, you're gonna write a book, well, you're gonna do this, well, you're gonna do that. Well, how would I do that? How would I solve for that? Getting on Google, figuring it all out. No, the answer to how is yes, yes. And we can practice this by starting with small things and then larger and larger things that are in our estimation, small and large, because in spirit, there's no small or large. 
But we can start by getting an intuitive hit about something, saying yes and moving forward with that and seeing how it unfolds in our lives. And then the next thing that happens, we build trust in ourselves, in our intuitions, in our own full body presence and alignment and awareness of our yes. We practice and practice and practice. And soon, as things come to us, our yes comes to us. And then we know that what comes with our yes is everything supplied in order to see it to its full fruition. Imagine going forward in life with the idea that the answer to how is yes. May that be your way. Good morning, Soul Call Ministries. It's me, Amy Steinberg. I'm so blessed to be here with you, Lisa and Rev Christie. I say yes. I say yes to the goodness. I say yes to love. I say yes to abundance, raining down from up above. I say yes, I say yes, I say yes. I say yes to forgiveness. I say yes to God. I say yes to the moment, bringing me such positive thoughts. I say yes, I say yes, I say yes. No to the fear, no to the voices that scream about despair. I say yes to the glory, to the light, yes to the voices that sing out with my. We sing yes, we sing yes, we sing yes. I say yes to acceptance, I say yes to grace, I say yes to the beloved. Looking back at me when we're face to face, I say yes to surrender. I say yes to faith. I say yes to the lessons I'm learning how to grow through all the pain. I say yes. I say yes. I say yes. No to the darkness. No to the fear. No to the voices that scream about despair. I say yes to the glory, to the light. Yes to the voices that sing out with mine. I say no to depression. No to the rant. No to the voices that tell me that. Can't I say yes to authentic? Yes to the truth. Yes to the laughter. Yes to you. I say yes. I say yes. I say yes. I say yes. I said I just want to live in a joyful world. All I want to be is a happy girl. I just want to live in a joyful world. All I want to be is a happy girl. I say yes to love, to joy, to peace, and yes to happiness. Yes to And yes to happiness, I say yes. Namaste, I love you. Thank you, Amy Steinberg. Now we're going to move into the participation practice. We're incorporating these into our Sunday programs so that we can start to learn together to grow in our awareness of the energy that is around us and within us at all times and learn how to co-create our experience in a more meaningful, more conscious way. Harnessing all that energy, the power from within to live our best life. And here's Deborah Weisenberger Lippitz with our participation practice for the week. Enjoy, participate, do it, do it. Today, please stand. You may also sit if you're more comfortable. Feet together comfortably. Don't force anything. Straighten the back, relax the shoulders. Please look forward with the eyes open. Extending from the mind's home outward. Stretching the vision to merge with nature. Then further to the stars and further to infinite space. From there, gather all the healing chi, love, wisdom, and pull it back, gently back through the stars, through nature, to the center of the head, and very gently close the eyes. With the eyes closed, it's very easy 
to feel the center of the head shining brightly inside. From the center of the head, place your awareness to the top of the head, what we call the Ba Hui, and open up, expanding upward into infinite space, gathering all the healing energy, love, good wisdom, and pour it down into this space, enveloping all of us, and shining into the mind's home. Drop down to the middle of the chest, the heart center, shining from the heart center, radiate outward to merge with Lisa, myself, and everyone participating today our loved ones, connecting us all heart to heart and mind to mind as one. From inside the center of the chest, the heart center, again, radiate outward through the body in all directions to infinite space. Gather all the healing, love, energy, good wisdom, and pull it back, gently contracting inside, uniting, transforming, altering, healing. Now feel the hands resting naturally. Extend the fingers to merge into the earth gathering the earth energy, then continue all the way through the earth, breaking through into the blue sky and beyond to infinite space. From there, gather all the healing energy, love, good wisdom, and pull it up through the earth, healing the entire earth up into the soles of our feet. And as we lift the arms and hands diagonally from the body, we are moving this energy through the legs, moving up inside the body, hips into the torso, moving up into the shoulders, neck, head, all the way up, merging with infinite space above, now pour this loving energy back through inside the head, lighting up every cell into the chest, moving into the hips, into the thighs, into the feet, back into the earth and through to infinite space. Gather all the healing, chi, love, good wisdom, and again, pull it up through the earth into our body, lighting up, illuminating every cell, pure chi, light, into infinite space above and pour it back through to the tips of the toes, back into the earth, infinite space then gathering and moving back up through the earth into the body, lighting up, illuminating every cell into infinite space above. Now pour all this loving energy back through. Hands rest on the navel as the energy continues all the way to the tips of the toe. Now enjoy nurturing this loving, healing energy, chi, deep inside. Inside, outside, the same. Pure light, chi. Feel the joy inside every cell. So joyful to be rejuvenated, reunited connected with chi, love, energy, wisdom. 
this joy moving up inside the body to the eyes. Then relax the hands to both sides. Gently open the eyes, smiling from the inside out. With great gratitude, give thanks to this loving, healing energy, Chi, within us, around us, and about us at all times. Thank you. How love. Yeah, thank you, Reverend Christie, for that awesome message. Thank you, Amy Steinberg, for I say yes to abundance. Way to go. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. And we also thank Deborah Weisenberger Lippitz for the participation practice, learning how to pull in that energy that's all around us. It's been with us all the time. Now we're learning how to work with it and not be passive bystanders, just going passively through life. Learn how to harness all this energy that's inside and around, start living our best lives, through these challenging times. Uh, we thank you for your donations. Soulcallministries.org slash donate helps us to keep the classes going, keep the ministry going. And we're donating to people in your towns, in our hometown here in Columbus and also around the globe. So if there's a, an organization that you are familiar with, that you're passionate about, let us know about it. Send us, drop us a line at info at soulcallministries.org. And check out our upcoming events and classes soulcallministries.org slash classes. Uh, one's coming up in a couple of weeks with Jim Lockhart examining the shadow with uh, the work of Joseph Campbell and comparative mythology and also Carl Jung. It's a four session class, Tuesdays and Thursdays start, starting July 21st. And it's two consecutive weeks, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday. And then there's a whole slate of classes coming up in August. We thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing us with your friends on social media and also for subscribing to our YouTube channel right here. And we also thank you for signing up for the newsletter and sharing that newsletter with your friends. Um, spread around, spread the goodness around. And wherever you are on the planet, remember that you are loved. Mm -hmm.